Hi, my name is Michael Gilmore and I'm the writer of Whizbang's blog and it's really good to have you here today with us. And with me is a special guest, my daughter Sarah. And uh, it's great to see you, Sarah. Hi, hi guys. Yeah, make sure you say hi to everyone. Eh? <laughs> but um, you may ask, why do I have Sarah with me? If you remember, some of you saw a video with Sarah and I three years ago, which is quite some time ago. You doing it is. final year of high school? Yes, yeah, so I was doing my final year of high school. Way yeah. finished now. Oh, way yeah. finished now, that's for sure. And she was doing the final year of high school and I was asking her about the internet and she's like a market researcher of one person to find out what she thought about domain names, where she, uh, where she uh, got her music from and where she, what media she consumed as really a target market for us all. So I thought I'd ask Sarah some of those very similar questions now. So Sarah, where best do you listen to your music? Um, I probably listen to the majority of my music from YouTube. Uh, YouTube? Yeah. So that's become the default international radio yep. station? Or even SoundCloud now is becoming uh, a lot bigger and that's where I listen to a lot of my music as well. Wow, okay, so do you, when you go to SoundCloud, SoundCloud you go to soundcloud.com or youtube.com? No, I use the apps, apps are everything at the moment. Apps? Yes. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's probably not good news for domainers, is it? <laughs> probably not. <laughs> but do you find you run out of real estate on your phone or something like that? Or what was uh, the story? No, not really. Because I remember you, you showed uh, Mum and I Spotify. Right. And you took us yeah. through Spotify. Are you still using Spotify? I don't use Spotify as much purely for the fact that you have to pay for it. And oh, not good. Anything good for do. Spotify, not good for the listeners. Yeah, okay. exactly. So I was, um, when I signed up for a phone contract, I actually got a free three month period where I got Spotify for free. And although I really enjoyed it, um, I don't think it's worth paying for. Um, wow. Because there are free options. That's just my opinion. Free, free <laughs> options out there. Okay, so you, you, you looked at Spotify for a while, you've moved away from that, and you're now on, yeah. back on YouTube and that sort of thing. And um, so what other things do you do, what places do you go? Do you use Facebook a lot still? Yeah, I use Facebook every day. Probably way too much, way too many hours Way too day. much. <laughs> yeah. So Facebook is still managed to retain your interest. Um, it's not even interest anymore, it's sort of just routine. It's just routine. How yeah. about Google Plus? Google Plus is awesome, isn't it? No, I haven't no. touched Google Plus, no. I don't no. Know. Okay, so Google Plus did a big fail, but Facebook did a big plus. Yes. Well, what's the thing you look at the most on Facebook? Um, I purely just scroll through my newsfeed and try and filter out what I do want to read and what I don't want to read. Maybe yeah. just to see what my friends are up to or... Uh, I actually view a lot of my news on Facebook now, which is interesting. Interesting. Yeah, so, you know, I can imagine news websites and newspapers and still things like that. Um, well, I'm getting all my news from Facebook and I just look at whatever's trending and, you know, finding out about whether it's the Oscars yep. or about an earthquake in Queensland. So Leonardo did get his Academy Award. He did, award he did Okay, that's good to hear. Yes, yeah. Leo. <laughs> So, so here's a question then. Do you guys, um, do you use the new GTLDs? What is a GTLD? Okay, interesting question, isn't it? <laughs> See, one of the things that we do as domainers, we use lots of acronyms and all that sort of stuff. And I know you've had a bit of a baptism of fire in the acronyms. Yes. But a new GTLD, so a new top, say, or a new top level domain. Like okay. such as a dot club or a dot top or, okay, right. or, or dot XYZ or dot photo and so forth. Yeah. Do, you, you, do you use those? Yeah, it's non-existent. No. Non-existent. So what, do you go to dot .com? Dot .com. It's always dot .com. I've it's dot .com. Have a com .au for Australia. Yeah. Very occasionally. Okay. Not very frequently though. Okay. But you just don't even know what a... It's what, not on the radar. Not no. on the radar. Do you think it will be though? Um, I think it'll actually be really helpful. I think it'll help, you know, specialise what you're looking for, for starters. I can imagine like if you are looking for whether it's a golf club or a nightclub mm -hmm. or whatever, I can imagine like when I'm going out on the weekend and I'm looking out for melbourne.club and I can have a list of all the clubs there I want to go to or... Yeah, and Colin and Jeff from Dot Club would just <laughs> love that. Okay, yeah, so yeah. you could just find out like Melbourne Club or Sydney Club yeah. or New York or something like that. It makes it a lot easier, I can imagine. Yeah, versus sort of thinking, oh, what, what, what is the dot .com? Yeah. Do you know what dot .com stands for? probably used to, but I can't... You don't know, do you? Now it's just internet. Yeah. It actually stood for dot .commercial. Oh. Commercial. That's where it stood for. How about dot .org? Yeah, 
organization. And have a .net? Uh, network. Network, okay. Well, it's really interesting that .com has become synonymous with, um, with the internet for Sarah's generation. So the question that has to be asked then is, the whole new GTLD space, is that gonna bypass Sarah's generation? Is actually the next generation which is gonna pick it up more and become synonymous with the internet then? Do you think that? Um, I think it's all about how it's executed. I think, because it's so unknown at the moment, um, it's obviously very well known to you and your community and everything, but to people my age who are the main, mm. I feel like the main users of the internet, it's not very well known at all, so. Yeah, yeah well, it'd be, it'd be interesting to see how it all pans out. So here's, here's another question for you. Um, one of the things that the domain industry has definitely experienced is a whole boom in the value of domain names due to the influx of Chinese capital. Or the Chinese buying up lots. Okay. Also domains. So, um, and it seems almost like there's been, like someone paying a thousand dollars for a domain and someone says, no, I'll buy for two thousand. Another one goes along with buys for three and so forth like that. Um, so, a question I'm going to ask you is going to be a bit of a tough one. You may or may not be able to answer this, but um, what's the value of a domain? What's a good domain? Uh, I would think the value would depend on quite a number of things. Like, for example, how much traffic that domain name is receiving. Yep. Um, I, I gotta love that, and I didn't, I didn't school her on that one. She obviously had many dinner conversations about traffic. Very, very okay, because that's what Park Logic deals with all all day, every day is traffic. Yeah, yeah okay. so exactly. So how many people are actually going to that domain name? Um, I suppose actually yeah. the you know the demand for it. Like how many people actually want this domain will probably increase the value. If you know there's a lot of people after it, a lot of people wanting to spend their money on it, then the value will go up. Um, yeah. So so why do you think? people are constantly buying higher and higher and higher valuations. Like someone's got to be buying, they don't have anyone to sell to. Um, I'm not sure, it, it depends. Are, are they wanting to use that domain name for themselves or are they trying to use it as an investment? As an investment, as an investment, investment uh, perspective. Yeah. yeah, well that's an interesting question. In fact, I plan on taking a look at this question a bit more in depth in one of my blogs coming up is what is the value of a domain name and what makes a domain valuable? And that's really what we're talking about, isn't it? And so when we look at the new, new GTLD space, one of the things it's done is it's added a huge amount of supply into the market and very similar demand uh, is, is there. Like sure we are in a Chinese bubble and that sort of thing, but really what is the underpinning value of a domain name? Now, can I just say, Sarah, it's been really good um, talking with you. Yeah. And I, I just got a bit Perfect. of an announcement here. Sarah's decided to give me a hand with Wizbang's blog to help out and doing yeah, things absolutely. on a part-time basis. It's gonna be really good yeah. to have you do it some things. Be fun. Get some experience. Yeah, definitely. I'm already learning so much that I didn't really know before, so it's gonna be great. Which is really good. So make sure you come to Wizbang's blog and you say hi to Sarah. You've got an account on Wizbang's blog? I do, blog? I sure do. Uh, yeah. That's good. And you may even receive an email from Sarah, so it'd be, uh, it'd be great to say hi back and that sort of thing. But I'm sure we'll announce more about what Sarah's up to in the time ahead. In the meantime, it's been really good talking with you and see you later then. Bye. See you guys. Bye. Bye.